3D printing has been in my life for a lot longer than I initially gave it credit for. A few years ago, a subscriber of mine sent me a 3D printing kit. It was a Prusa variant called the TiVo Tarantula and it took me three days to put it together. It took even longer to actually get it to print anything. After spending weeks just tinkering with this pile of wires, I decided to give it to a buddy of mine. He used it for a while before getting annoyed and passing it off to another friend who still has it to this day. He comes over sometimes just to cuss at me for giving it to him. I don't hate the TiVo Tarantula, but that printer's a pain in the ass. A couple years later, I decided to buy my brother a 3D printer. I figured it would be a nice hobby for him, so my mother and I went halfsies on a Creality Ender 3v2. It sat for weeks. My brother never touched it, so I built it and started playing around with it. Whether he likes it or not, this printer is mine now, and I've been crafting some really useful things almost every day, and I wanted to explain why my opinions on 3D printers has changed and what I've made so far. Firstly, let's talk about the printer. Like I said, this is the Creality Ender 3v2, which is one of the most popular printers out there. I decided to get this one because it has such a wide community, which means that most prints online will be optimized for this printer. If anything ever went wrong, I could jump into basically any form and my problem will have been addressed. There's also a lot of upgradability in terms of the physical unit as well as the firmware, and the price was just right. Now, initially I started printing things that I needed. See, I've been working on my 1982 Volkswagen Vanagon for about two years now, and being that this is a vintage vehicle, some parts are unnecessarily expensive. For example, these sun visor clips. Mine were damaged and falling apart, so I went online to find new ones only to realize that they're six dollars each! Six bucks for a piece of plastic! So I went online and found someone who designed their own clips and I printed two of them for close to nothing. I've done this a lot with the van. I have these vents up front here with the little Westy logo, I printed some caps for the windshield wipers. Nobody online sells the ceiling vents anymore, but you for damn sure can 3D print the shit out of them, which made everything so much easier. Even my door handle covers are 3D printed. This is when things took off for me and my passion for 3D printing really peaked. I started looking up everything I owned and typing it into Thingiverse. I typed in the model of my camera only to find these little battery holders. Not only do they refine my storage capability, but they also help me determine which batteries are drained and which still have a charge. I looked up the word knife only to find this cool knife rack. I looked up the valve index only to realize that there are ways to mount the controllers and headset to the wall. I also made these little clips to hold the cables up for the base stations. Here's the one with the clips, and here's the one without the clips. I recently did the same thing with my Sennheiser HD 560s, and the mount even has a place to wrap the headphone cable. On the side of my computer, I have a mount for my Xbox controller, so if I want a game, I can just grab it and store it instead of leaving it lying around. Even the fan duct inside my PC that's keeping my computer cold is 3D printed, and I designed that duct myself. Now, obviously, I found a lot of uses for this 3D printer, and I'm glad that I have one. That's not to say that there aren't any cons for these things. Whoever built the first one made a huge mistake by naming them printers. If you want something to fail for goddamn no reason, call it a printer, and these things will just act up sometimes for seemingly no reason. You'll print a thing, and it'll do it flawlessly, so you go to have it print the exact same thing, and for an entire day, it just spits out fails. Then there's the fact that you're hurling microplastics and toxins all around the house. I'm a bit paranoid about that one, especially since my 3D printer is in my bedroom and sometimes I'll have it printing while I'm asleep. It makes me feel like I'm gonna go to bed one day printing an ashtray and then ironically wake up with cancer and I didn't even get to try smoking yet. I did research this one a bit and most people don't seem concerned about microplastics and toxins from 3D printing, but that'll always be in the back of my mind regardless. Then there's the firmware upgrades. You don't have to do this, you can just get the printer and use it out of the box. After you've built it, of course, but upgrading the firmware, especially to Mriscock Professional or something like that, it adds so much! You can store your settings onto the motherboard instead of leaving them on the micro SD. You can see all your temps and access points as you print. You can set the printer to prong the bed at a 4x4, a 5x5, and even tell it to stow the probe so it levels faster. You can have the printer heat up the hot end and the bed over and over so it calibrates itself and heats up more efficiently over time. And again, you can store all of these settings to the motherboard now. That's awesome! But... See, I was in the middle of printing these battery holsters for my camera. I got the wild idea to upgrade the firmware right in the middle of it. How hard could it be, I thought. I downloaded the firmware, popped the SD card in the printer, and it was bricked. Took me three days to realize that I downloaded Ender 3 Pro software instead of Ender 3 V2. 
Once I got the real firmware, it took me another couple days to get it set back up and working properly again, and yes, I learned a lot, and yes, it was fun, but this is not a toaster. You don't just buy these things and they work as they should. You have to want to be a tinkerer. You have to be the type of person who likes fixing stuff, or you're going to get angry, you're going to pick up the printer and shake it in a rage, throw it across the room, and end up having to fix it just enough so you can 3D print the pieces you broke on the poor bastard. Do I recommend this? Hell yeah, I do! As annoying as it can be, it's also extremely fulfilling getting these things to make what you want. It's heartwarming to go online and see some kind souls have made stuff they wanted and openly shared it so everyone else could enjoy it too. The communities are awesome, the stuff you can make is awesome, and being able to download a program and design your own specific thing for your own specific need just feels amazing. For the love of God, it's changing the world, too! People are 3D printing their own houses now! Not only is it more affordable, but you can pick some pretty wild designs! For those of you who are still on the fence about 3D printing, let me give you one final analogy. 3D printing is a balancing act. It's seductive. You have to be patient and loving. It's kind of like intercourse in a way. You gotta clean your nozzle, you gotta warm things up, make sure you're at the right heat and speed, and if you mess it up, it's just a disappointing mess.